and welcome to the elephant in the room. I'm Jasmine Bowen and you are watching Remake TV. Today we have a great couple of guests for you today. We're going to be talking about immigration, uh, why people come to Canada and you think it's that easy to just come into Canada, this great land of opportunity. It's not quite that easy. But before we get to our guests, uh, we have a very special contest for you. Don't forget $500 a month just for referring your friends to Remake TV. So after you watch this video, you could go get a glass of milk or you could win $500 for telling your friends about it. Click on the banner, enter your friends information, and there you go. You're on your way to win. Now, on the elephant in the room, we have Dasha. Welcome. Dasha, um, you are an immigrant yourself. Yeah. Yes. Now, where are you from? Uh, well, I was born in Ukraine, but mm -hmm. most of my life I lived in Moldova, one of the countries of the Soviet Union. So basically, that's where I lived most of my life there before mm -hmm. Canada, and that's where I came to Canada. Now, how long have you been here? Uh, since 2003, so um, eight years now. Eight, eight <laughs> nine years. Yeah. All right, so not, not a super long time here. Um, and your process of immigration, I understand, was fairly e easy once you got here. Uh, well, I came with my family. My parents applied through professional uh, mm -hmm. immigration. Uh, but the, um, like, at that point of time, their professions were qualified for to, okay. to go through in Canada. Uh, but you had to go through interview, you had to show that you're qualified, you had to talk about your uh, work experience in English mm -hmm. at the interview, which was not very... Um, very easy for my mm -hmm. parents and, uh, and then you had to wait a long time to get the visa mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, for some reason it's it's very it takes them a long time to process and you uh, wait for a year or, or even more without any news from embassy and then suddenly and then you have to go through a uh, medical examination mm -hmm. and how um, Im how immigration process works the medical examination the certificate that you are okay uh, that your health is okay to come to Canada mm -hmm. it's valid for one year okay and um, if you're if you don't get visa and if you if you don't come to Canada within a year after your medical examination you have to go to, through it again wow. so you have to wait even longer and we got our visa uh, four weeks before our medical certificate had Ooh. to expire, so it was really okay. So then this, precious. and I mean, you guys were were coming over from a country that was not necessarily war torn, or you were just mm -hmm. coming over, mm -hmm. um, and that's hard enough to go through. I mean, that's a lot to go through for a change of job and a change of scenery and all that. But you you now work in immigration, yes. right? Yeah. Um, and you see a lot of people coming over for a lot harder reasons mm -hmm, than you mm -hmm. did. So, I mean, you had to wait a year, two years. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me about these people who are coming over who need immediate assistance and immediate kind of safety. Well, actually, people who come to Canada as refugees, uh, some of them just come to airport and okay. uh, they throw away their passport kind yes of, yeah, yeah. Okay. or like they give, give themselves up to to the refugee board and they they spend some time in the detention centers and like even today we got a call from a person and he's like I'm in the detention center can you advise me something okay so there are all sorts of people some people just first come to Canada and then uh, if they have if they have a chance they mm -hmm. get legal advice and they prepare themselves and before they go to to a refugee board mm -hmm. and some some are just desperate and they just so come a out. refugee coming over say from a war torn country um, and then he has to sit in a attention center detention center that's well um, as far as I understand how it works uh, they they it takes several days for them to like figure out because they can't just mm -hmm. let anyone and they don't right. know whether it's a right. terrorist or a real right. refugees so it's not a prison mm -hmm. but it's like a detention center so it's not very nice and I mean uh, it's not something you want to sit in after escaping possibly yes, a war yeah. or um, your personal safety is is being damaged now what are some reasons that people come over oh people come for all sorts of reasons mm -hmm. and uh, well war or 
like serious conflicts within the country is obvious ones right but also um, sometimes it's just uh, either ethnic um, ethnic problems mm -hmm. uh, nationalism or uh, some people come as refugees for homosexualism really? or, so tell like, me tell me about that where are they coming from usually um, many people come from countries uh, which are like Catholic or who have um, countries with conservative governments okay. uh, where it's not it's not necessarily that uh, gay marriage is not allowed or mm -hmm. homosexualism is prohibited there mm -hmm. it's just more that um, society views homosexualism as something really bad and does not accept it and uh, usually like gay couples are beaten and it, there's really? like threat from society to them where where are you finding this is happening like um we had cases from russia we russia. had cases from ukraine from okay. lithuania so like in so europe these, in eastern europe these are not i think countries you would necessarily suspect right off the bat well, this because, because this is this is not an overt issue because mm -hmm. the official position of the country is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not that uh, it's officially against homosexualism mm -hmm. it's just that uh, society as a society as a whole does not mm -hmm. does not accept it right so their life is in danger for essentially yeah. their yeah. their bedroom yeah. choices um, are there any other reasons why they come over that are frequent um, some women come uh, escape from abusive husbands. We okay. had several women who uh, came, who ran to ran away to Canada because they had they were persecuted by by their ex husbands. Uh, they wanted to divorce them because uh, it was an abusive relationship, mm -hmm. but their husbands obviously would not let them go, mm -hmm. and uh, they would persecute them, and mm -hmm. the police wouldn't want to do anything about it, right. and. Uh, um, women had no other choice than to escape any country and Canada is one of them. So once once they get here, to take me through that. What happens once, I mean, you've escaped your country, you've mm -hmm. escaped whatever situation mm -hmm. it is, you got on the plane, you made it to the airport, now what? Well, some some women come as visitors mm -hmm. and first they are like for a few months as visitors and then they uh, usually they apply yeah, for a refugee okay. status for refugee protection and it takes a lot of uh, time because first they um, bring their documents and their story mm -hmm. and uh, in within some time half a year or even more uh, they appear before the court and okay. um, there is a hearing and then uh, they assess whether they deserve the protection or no okay. and uh, in many cases well it's kind of subjective mm -hmm. because like you really judge especially in cases like this it's not war-torn country right it's internal so you yeah. can't judge something that it's internal right it's not so obvious and sometimes women get ref get refusal and they have they are sent back to their countries and even though the situation I mean they could lose their lives just yeah. for going back yeah. now what I mean what are they doing it you said they're waiting mm -hmm. sometimes a really long time mm -hmm. to, what are they doing when they're waiting, what can they do? How can they support themselves? Well, they can they can apply for work permits. Okay. So they can, and some some people, some women, some uh, refugees who have their cases pending, mm -hmm. they're just trying to start a new life. And uh, actually, we have a client who who's been here for like five years, mm -hmm. and she runs her community newspaper uh, dedicated mm -hmm. to health, and it's in Russian language, and uh, she's pretty, and her kids go to school so mm -hmm. they're pretty grounded but their uh, legal status in really is really in question right. and um, they don't know what's gonna happen to them next whether they will get status or no but or they could be just picked up from their lives and shipped back to whatever well, they left. yeah basically they there is an opportunity that right. they will be said well here is a month for you to pack your bags. And now that back. that's not a good situation for a child to be. I mean, they've already been uprooted oh, yeah. once mm -hmm. to be uprooted again. Now you said um, earlier that it's easier for men to kind of establish themselves than women. Can you tell me about that? Well, uh, especially well when pe young people come to Canada, mm -hmm. like 
below 40, younger right. than 40, it's okay, they can easily re-establish themselves in new society, but mm -hmm. for people who come uh, to Canada at age 45, 50, mm -hmm. it's not that easy because uh, they, they can learn language that mm -hmm. easily and uh, uh, they have to re-establish themselves in, in, a, in their profession mm -hmm. or find a new one. And a lot of the professions don't translate, like necessarily if you got yeah. a medical degree in oh, another well, country. Yeah, yeah. medical degrees. <laughs> Forget you'll about never it. get it back here, even though you, you went to school for like 12, 15 yeah. years in your you country. You'll have to basically do it again. Okay, wow. Well, or some people just find um, uh, more inferior positions mm -hmm. like uh, hygienist or aesthetician, okay. something not as demanding. Because the government essentially yeah. won't recognize their degree. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what about these women coming over? So, yes, um, while men can find themselves in like traditional masculine training, electricians or truck drivers mm -hmm. so they can kind of establish themselves in something professional mm -hmm. and which does not require a uh, an enormous knowledge mm -hmm. of English language, but women, it's not, well, there aren't many truck driver women mm -hmm. or electrician women. So basically these 50 year olds or something, well, basically they go to cleaning jobs mm -hmm. and it's, um, it's sad and um, it's, it's sad because they try to establish, they mm -hmm. try to find a new life, mm -hmm. but well, that's what they have to now, do. Now, are you seeing um, some of these women come over who end up in, in maybe worse situations than they were in sex trafficking if they don't have a choice to support themselves or any of that? Mm, what do you mean? Do you, when these women come over, mm -hmm. um, and if they don't have a choice to support themselves, okay. do, you, do you see any of them end up in, in the sex trade or anything like that? Well, basically, I think uh, if you look in, a, for example, Russian newspaper, mm -hmm. it's like in any other newspaper, there are uh, ads and mm -hmm. there are like massage mm -hmm. parlors, massage parlors which yeah. are not really massage yes. parlors. <laughs> and uh, yeah, basically, I think um, you don't you don't encounter that like in real life, mm -hmm. but it's kind of hidden. But okay. it's so I mean, clearly, it doesn't happen yeah. if they can't support themselves. I mean, what else can you do, right? Um, well, and especially for people who don't have status, it's right. really easy to abuse them. Like, I know a woman who, um, she's on her visitor visa and okay. she tries to apply for some kind of uh, status. Mm -hmm. And she was working for a um, uh, for a couple. She was babysitting their children. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to, uh, she, she asked them to sign a document so that she can apply for extension of her visa right and they didn't want to sign the documents because they didn't want her to get a legal status because if she gets a legal status and then, then they wouldn't they well they will have to pay her more she wouldn't wow. she wouldn't depend on them completely as she is now is there any other stories that you have like that mm. Well, this is one of the recent ones. It's just, yeah, well, even uh, like agencies mm -hmm. uh, for simple jobs, like, like factories, temp jobs, yeah, yeah. temporary jobs, if people don't have status, well, they, they're basically turned into slaves because, wow. uh, well... And then this is something that's not known to really happen in, in Canada. Yeah, because you can't complain, you can't really talk about it because you don't want your, uh, you don't want to re reveal that you are, well, illegal in Canada, yeah. right? So Cause you could get shipped back. And this is and this is a well a problem I think because uh, uh, it's just while people are trying to find the way how they can uh, bec mm -hmm. how they can get a legal status, mm -hmm. they are subject to all sort of uh, well bad things and they can't get protection because yeah they are illegal so here. things that would be done to them that are i mean illegal by our laws mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's nothing that yeah. can be done dasha what would you like to see the canadian government do or um sp to speed up the process i mm -hmm. mean what do you think is wrong with the system well, yeah, bureaucracy is like a huge problem and actually last year there was uh, uh, one more um, processing center mm -hmm. open in Vancouver okay. and it kind of, too, well, it was like a backlog center, so right. they, all the cases that were stuck in other centers, they were sent there so that they can at least process a little bit quicker, Okay, but um, I think, well, uh, yeah, I think definitely we need more of these centers to mm -hmm. for 
quicker processing mm -hmm. and also um, I think well there needs to be well I don't know uh, I guess we need more resources for that okay. but the um, uh, the assessment of the refugee cases, right. the assessment of uh, humanitarian and compassionate cases, where because that um, that's I mean really because kind of these a are subjective. Yes. yes, it's not it's not based in facts. It's based on subjective opinion and yeah. whether this particular officer sees this as um, legitimate or not legitimate reason yeah. to stay in Canada. And right. um, I think this these segments need clearly a better system of assessment. Right which would be able to weigh out the pros and cons. Yeah, because I mean, the dangers. officer could have something against a women who have been abused and just yeah, not like, care. You never know, right? Do you think that there's cases of, of people coming over who end up in worse situations than they were at home because of the way the bureaucracy works? Mm, yeah, well, it's... Because I mean, at home they could be a doctor, and here they end up in a factory. For actually, five actually, an hour. this is the problem with a uh, professional workers program right. in general. Because when you you have to you you can get to Canada mm -hmm. if you are of certain professions, right? Mm -hmm. So you apply to to immigration as a professional, and you right. come to Canada as a professional. But when you are in Canada, you find yourself in a situation where you can't be that professional. So even so though they accepted you for that, yeah. So you end up working in a completely like unprofessional works in a completely unqualified like For, low jobs. Yeah. Wow. So even though they they kind of reached out and accepted you, you can only come over if you're a doctor. We have a shortage of doctors, yeah. and then you can't even be a doctor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So basically, like all you get for being of a certain profession, for being mm -hmm. a programmer or a doctor, is your visa to Canada, and that's it. And, that's, and then, that's the prize. And then, yeah, you're on your own. And uh, if you can make it, you're good. If you cannot make it, well, find something else less ambitious. Wow. Yeah. Well, and I mean, doctors, they go to school for 12, 15 years. They spend a lot of money doing that. And then to not even be accepted over mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. is, well, thank you for sharing your mm -hmm. story mm -hmm. with us and um, sharing some of the problems with the bureaucracy. When we come back, we're going to go to one of these extreme countries. We're going to look at the situation in Myanmar and the struggles that the immigrants have from there coming over here. So go get your glass of water, get a glass of milk, fluffy pillows, come right back and watch this tape. See you next time on Remake TV.